and he's finally healed, it's like, wow, oh, that guy? Yeah, I know him. Verse 23, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. So now they go and they're repeating the story. They say, hey man, this is what happened. We were, you know, we were down, downtown and this is what happened. They took us and they threatened us and they're recounting the story. Verse 24, and when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Look at verse number 25, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. So now, they're, they, after they hear this story, they're recounting, oh yeah, Psalm 2 says, why did the heathen rage? Yeah. So the reason why I'm bringing this up, obviously, is because we get a perfect story and a perfect example shown to us in Scripture of what this verse is even talking about, what Psalm 2 is talking about, why did the heathen rage? And the rulers set themselves against the Lord and against his anointed. And another point to make here is that when, when they're quoting Psalm 2, verse 2, in the New Testament, in Acts 4, 26, Psalm 2 says against the Lord and against his anointed. <coughs> Acts 4, 26 says against the Lord and against his Christ. Right? So he's using those words interchangeably. And this just helps us to understand when he's talking about his anointed. I mean, you probably figure that out anyways. When he's talking about his anointed, it is talking about Christ. Now, the reason why I'm also bringing this up is because it's listing the Lord and Christ as two people, as two separate, you know, distinct persons being against. And what it says there in Psalm 2, uh, hold your place in Acts chapter 4. It says, uh, I'm going to repeat verse number two. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder. There, it uses plural. It doesn't say let us break his bands asunder. Let us break their bands. Well, who's the there? Well, in context, it's against the Lord and against his anointed. Against the Lord and against Christ. Their bands. The Lord's and Christ's bands. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. So this is, you know, all throughout Scripture you're going to find where Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are going to be referred to as, as plural, as, as, you know, coexisting, but also one. You also see the Lord our God is one Lord. There's one God, okay? And that is the Trinity, that there is, there is one God that exists who exists in three persons, Okay, and I'm not going to take the time to really go in depth on that doctrine tonight, but this is just one more place in Scripture that you can look at and see, oh yeah, this lines right up. Because the people who want to say, well, Jesus is the Father, this makes no sense. There's a oneness movement out there that's trying to say that, you know, they, they take things way too far to an extreme of, God, of there being one God, and just saying that, well, Jesus and the Father and Holy Ghost are all just, just one in the sense like, basically, well, Jesus is the Father, is the Holy Ghost, that they're all just the same thing. And it's, they're not all the same. We saw last week, I think it was last week, we saw the, the will of Jesus, or it was a couple weeks ago. The will of Jesus trying to line up, you know, lining up with the will of the Father, but seeing distinctly that they have two different wills, there are two different persons in the Godhead, yet one God simultaneously. So um, just wanted to point that out here. Let's keep reading here in Acts chapter 4, verse 27. The Bible says, For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord... Behold their threatenings. So when the, the when the heathen rages, what do they do? They're going to threaten. They're going to try to silence you. They're going to try to stop you. And this is what the heathen does. It's funny because, you know, again, for people who don't believe, you know, we're talking about, I was talking about the atheists earlier, people don't, don't believe it. Why do you care how much I want to preach about the, about the Bible? You know, why does that matter to you at all? And, uh, but they can't stand it. They hate it. 
they rage against it. The Bible says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. We need to remember as people who believe in God's word, not just believe in God's word, but people who are going to go forth and preach the word of God and stand on the word of God and, and have convictions and, and live your life by the word of God, there are going to be people who are going to rage against you. There's heathen that is not going to like that. And you need to be prepared for that. And what the, what the disciples do here? They prayed to God, Hey God, grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. They didn't run and hide. They didn't cower when, you know, the chief priests and the rulers and all the really important people scolded them and said, we're going to, you know, we're going to cast you in prison and we're going to beat you and we're commanding you, you better not say anything about this, Jesus. Did that make them stop? Nope. They want to intimidate. They want to help try to cast fear and doubt into their minds. But we need to be strong. We need to not let those types of attacks and intimidation scare you into not serving the Lord anymore. 